Okay, if you want a little introduction to electricity, um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction on current and voltage in this video. If you want a reference to your textbook, it's sections 11.3 for voltage and section 11.5 for current. So just a quick reminder from grade 9 that current electricity is just ele electric charges or electrons that are flowing through a conductor. So it behaves kind of like marbles in a tube. If you're going to push one at one end of the tube, the other one instantly comes out the other side. So that is how current travels through a conductor. Now, in static electricity, recall in grade 9, that it was when electrons gathered in one place, like on the surface of a balloon. And it was often on the surface and, and the charges could move in all different directions. The type of current electricity that we will be doing this year is current. And it will be the flow of electrons in a controlled way. It's not like static electricity where the charges are moving all randomly. So electric circuit, um, you should be familiar with an electric circuit. It's just basically a continuous path. If you have an open switch or an opening in your circuit, your current will stop flowing. And there are different parts to the circuit. One of the parts that I'm going to talk about right now is the source. Often it can be a battery or it could be a power generating station. Um, for example, when you plug into an outlet at your home and you get power, that comes from the power generating station. So our source in this case is shown as a typical battery where the long side is your positive terminal and the short side is your negative terminal. So here's some examples of some symbols that we use for sources. Battery is usually made up of a bunch of cells in series. Um, it can also be cells in parallel. There's an AC generator that stands for alternating current which we'll talk about later, and DC generator, which stands for direct current. A DC generator, DC batteries produce DC, hydro produces AC. So a load, eventually we'll talk about loads. Loads basically transform energy, electrical energy, into other forms of energy. Things like a light bulb, or a kettle, or a heater, they're all examples of loads. So here's some symbols that we use when we're drawing circuits for loads. You can see there's a little lamp, a resistor. The resistor with the arrow on it is called a variable resistor or a rheostat. Basically, it can just adjust the value of the resistor a coil, and a transformer. So current. What is current? I've said that it's the flow of electrons through the circuit. We have a formula for calculating the current. And you may want to record this in your notes. Current, symbol I, is equal to Q which is the total amount of charge moving past the conductor. And we divide that by the time taken. And the time must be measured in seconds because the units for current are amps. And an amp is a coulomb per second. Charge is measured in something called coulombs. So, conventional current. Although I've been telling you that current flows 
like electrons and that current is the flow of electrons, we actually do the opposite. Conventional current basically is the flow of positive charges through the circuit, not negative. And there's a little bit of history behind that in that scientists originally didn't know which way current flowed. So they decided that they would just use the conventional current and they said, let's call it flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal. And it wasn't until later that they actually found out that it was really electrons that traveled and went the other way. But in this year, we will be dealing with conventional current, not electron flow. Here's just a little example. Um, you can write it in your notes if you want. We'll be doing more of these in class. But it says that there's a night light that uses 7 watts of light that draws 6 times 10 to the minus 2 amps of current. And it's asking you how much charge passes through this light bulb in 8 hours. So you can see the calculation here. But be careful because you had to convert that 8 hours into seconds before you can use it in the formula. So that calculated the charge that had passed in the night light, but then it said now find out how many actual individual electrons pass through the night light. So although you have the total charge calculated, now it wants the number of electrons. And this actually is another formula that you may want to write in your notes. Q equals NE. So the total charge, Q, in coulombs, equals N, the number of electrons, times E, which is the charge on one electron. So when you basically take that charge you found in the first part and divide it by the charge on the electron, you get the number of electrons, 1.1 times 10 to the 22. Okay, so now that we've talked about conventional current flow, flowing from the positive to the negative terminal, now we're going to talk about voltage or potential difference. And voltage is a little bit more difficult of a concept. Maybe you could think of it as kind of a force that pushes the current through the circuit. So I've shown here a waterfall. Um, and you could kind of think of the voltage as kind of the gravitational potential there. Right? And it's pushing the water down because it had a lot of potential. So here's another analogy to help you try to understand what potential difference is or what voltage is. The pump is providing on the left here the potential energy to the water. And then the water flow turns a water wheel. So this is analogous to in our circuit, the battery providing the current flow. In this case, they're showing electron flow. And then that drives your motor. Okay, so you can look at that and kind of compare. It helps you try to imagine what potential difference is. It's a source that in, in a way gives more energy. Voltage, or electric potential difference, there's a formula for it, which I've shown here. And it's in the electric potential energy, E, which is measured in joules, divided by the charge, which is measured in coulombs. So electric potential difference has the units of volts, which is a joule per coulomb. 
So you should write that formula down in your notes. Now here's a little, another little analogy to try and get you to understand electric potential difference or voltage. You've got a bicycle here, cyclists riding along, and when they go through the source, imagine that they're getting more energy. And then when they hit a load, something like, you know, a kettle or a light bulb or a resistor or refrigerator, it eats up some of their energy. Okay, and then they need to get more energy again, so they come back to the source and get supplied with energy again. One last analogy to help you understand potential difference is this truck riding around our circuit. So if we imagine our source getting the truck some more energy, the little boxes of energy there. So we fill it up, it drives it around, which is kind of like the current, and then when it hits a load, it delivers the energy. And by the time it's back at the source again, it basically needs to fill up because it's depleted all of its energies. So it gets filled up again. So there's a little analogy of voltage. And now we've covered the basic concepts of current, which if you recall is charge per unit of time, and the basics of electric potential difference or voltage, which you recall is the electric potential energy divided by the charge. So tomorrow in class, we'll do some problems on this. Okay, we'll see you then.